Hey guys, uh, me here with my terrible Ryan Goslin shirt again, and I've got my buddy Pedram here because we are going to start reviewing the Resident Evil films. Why? Mainly because we've had this really odd sort of history with the film, especially after Afterlife, where we laughed so fucking hard through that movie because of how awful it was, and now that the final chapter is coming, we thought that it would be good to review all of them and just watch a giant snowball turn into a giant shit ball as it slowly rolls down shit mountain. It's an avalanche of putrid yes. film waste. <laughs> but it's like a guilty obsession. Yeah, it is. Now, for me, honestly, I actually really never played the games. The, the only one that I ever played was Resident Evil 5 with Boulder Punching Chris. Uh, did you play them at all? Oh, I'm a huge fan of the video games. Like, I've played everything from the originals to the remakes of the originals to all the new stuff. And actually, just like the film franchise, it just keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sick. <laughs> so the first one we're reviewing is the one that was released in 2002, and it was written and directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. Not Paul Wes Anderson. Not Wes Anderson. The one that no one really wants to talk about. But what if Wes Anderson made a Resident Evil movie? Would that be a little It'd silly? be so hipster. <laughs> <laughs> the zombies would just explode in rainbows. And they all have, like, scarves. Yeah. Oh. So the first one, I always imagined, or at least from what I remembered, I always thought the first one was the best one. But after re-watching it, if that was what I thought the bur first, uh, sorry, the best one was, I'm not looking forward to watching the rest because this film is not aged well. It's, you know, for its time, for a video game movie, it was not bad. No, actually, yeah, it was yeah. probably the first one that said, wow, they actually can make these movies well. Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't really follow the first game. It has tidbits here and there, but really he actually took his own little idea that Alice wakes up, she has no memory of who she is, but then this rainbow team rainbow, <laughs> oh got my games rainbow wrong. squad, yeah, yeah umbrella, <laughs> I got my game. the umbrella, <laughs> faceless operatives, they appear, yeah. and then she's got amnesia for some reason, and then they go down to the hive because the hive had something happen to it which actually was kind of an interesting the virus escaped and the computer system locked it down and killed everyone they go down there, then they find out they're zombies, and they have to try and get out. Actually, quite a simplistic sort of story, and that's basically it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mentioned this uh, during the film as we were watching it, where the first one leaves a little bit of mystique and a lot of unanswered questions that, it, at the very least, while a lot of it is quite cheesy, mm -hmm. uh, you, you do kind of want to find out what's going on. Whereas in the later movies, they feel the need to over-explain every plot point, it can get pretty uh, oh, they get, pretty awful. Yeah, it does. It gets pretty awful. The thing that this film has, there's a few moments that are stand out. Like, obviously, when Alice fights the dogs, that was really cool, especially with that running in the wall jump kick. Or... Actually, I can't think of anything else. Everything else is pretty shitty. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting how she sort of suddenly remembers that she has these... Jason Bourne instincts to do well, these crazy Well, that was it. Jason moves, Bourne yeah. had just come out literally a year before, prior. So then I do not doubt that had an effect on the story because this movie suffers from plot convenient amnesia when her husband all of a sudden just remembers everything all at once whereas Alice has remembered things in pieces and it's just so stupid at the end. And the, the other thing, too, that really nips me about this movie is obviously it was made with a very limited budget. You can tell. Not just with the, with the hunter, the liquor. Yeah, but the also and with the new liquor that they had. The new liquor. But just yeah. also the zombies, too. Because at one point, Michelle Rodriguez gets bit by her old boyfriend. And yet all the other zombies are kind of, instead of biting her, they're all like at a rave for some reason. All like... <laughs> None of them are doing anything. Like one of the, it's Assassin's Creed mentality, one at a time. Yeah, there, there's uh, one point in the film. I actually don't know the actor's name, but uh, one of the Umbrella operatives, he's you know uh, separated from the rest of the team, and the zombies are just all after him. And you think he's pretty much done, yeah. But for whatever reason, they're just tickling him, and they, yeah. you know, <laughs> like. You've seen, like, three scenes earlier, they were more than happy to just jump in and start biting. But for whatever reason here, it's like, let's give this character a chance well, to Well, yeah, that's the thing, too. This movie was rated R, but this is, like, the lightest R zombie film I've 
ever seen. There's no gore. No. Really, there's blood. Like, what's it? The li- when Licker attacks uh, uh, Alice's husband, instead yeah. of ripping him apart, more so just... <laughs> <laughs> Covers him in, like, strawberry jam. <laughs> but uh, I would say, as far as gore goes, the closest thing they got was when the Licker sort of transforms. They created, like, that new form oh, of Oh, yeah, a little bit of animatronics and whatnot. Yeah, and there's that one zombie who when he first appears, looks towards the camera and half his face is missing with yeah. really poor, like, green oh, screen. Yeah, that was terrible green screen. Um, okay, one point that you did point out is that guy, the guy we were talking about, the tech guy. Yeah, the tech He's the guy. one who actually goes through the most amount of character in this film. Because at first, he's clearly the the weakest one of the group mm-hmm. and at the end he like when well near the end you think that he's going to kill himself but he can't bring himself to do it and he kind of has his own like Ooh. and then he saves them right and you're all like oh sweet and then he gets fudged up by the liquor yeah i would say that the best character in this film was that tech guy he i think he was likable you can clearly see that he was acted well enough that and he, and he was relatable yeah, exactly he was relatable and then he has the worst send-off he just dies. He gets pl- he literally gets plucked out of the story, <laughs> and that's it. Oh, and then Mila Jovovich. Uh, Jovovich. Jovi- Jovi- Mila. Mila Jovovich. For some reason, I have this thought that her husband now, uh, Paul W S uh, W S Anderson, just keeps on talking to her in the Swedish accent, even though he's. He's the farthest thing from Scandinavian. All right, Mila, now have no uh, no facial emotion. All right, Mila, have a deadpan face. Mila, she... it's naked scene now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's so deadpan throughout this whole movie. Yeah. What do we say? She she went from oh like deadpan and confused. Oh, deadpan and confused to deadpan and assertive. <laughs> yeah. So, and what are your thoughts? Like, like I said, like I thought this was the best one of them, and I originally of originally, and now I'm really, I'm really on the fence about any of them now. Like, how was this film age to you from when you first saw it? Well, when it first came out, I think it was okay. Yeah, it was a film you could go see and say, oh, this was based off a video game. It's not too bad. And it had a great soundtrack from Marilyn Manson. Yeah, like the music is still used. Yeah, I mean, there's one oh. guitar riff. It sounds cool, but, you know, it's the same thing every time they bring it up. So when yes. you hear it, it's like, that's that riff again. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was pretty good. Now, looking back... It's bad. It's really... It's watchable. It's watchable, at least. With a grain of salt. Yeah, exactly. You, you have to, like, allow yourself to accept... It's bad. That the, <laughs> that the budget and the effects were as awful as they so, were. All right, I'm going to be really harsh with this, but my rating for this is 2 out of 7. 2 out of 7. Yeah, I know. It's what's kind of making me wonder is, if this is 2 out of 7, and I thought this was the best one, I'm going to tear the shit out of the next one. It's going to be bad. (laughs) For the record, second is my favorite, but I'd probably give this a 3. A 3? Yeah. As a a hardcore fan of the franchise, there's a lot of... um, set development that they've done to sort of recreate the feeling of some of the scenes from like the video games Mm -hmm. so i appreciate that but for the average moviegoer it's similar to the warcraft movie if you're just you know you're walking into this movie you're gonna be like what the hell's going on here this doesn't make any sense (laughs) but if you like the video games you're like you know what i can appreciate the way they set up this one scene so all right guys so that's the first one we've done of our of our oh god it's gonna be seven this is gonna (laughs) be the build up to the last one the final one thank god it's over but yeah so these will come out periodically before the release of the seventh one which is in january so anyways uh, see you guys next time